Welcome to the spoiler review of Star Wars The Last Jedi. I highly recommend that if you haven't seen this movie that you read the article, which link is posted in today's subject as we're going to get into everything from characterization to plot points. Um, I am Mr. Nose, and this is... Well, go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm your lovely wife, Amy. Rosie just arrived. Yes, the lovely dog. So, Amy, what are your initial um, thoughts about just getting out of this film? I very much enjoyed this film. <laughs> we can talk about Thanos, the big chin guy. Okay, yeah, they played the Infinity War trailer <laughs> beforehand, but is there any specific uh, character moment that stands out? Uh, maybe I should have prefaced with I can talk about Guardians all day long. But I can't talk about <laughs> yes, Star a Marvel Wars. woman instead of a Star uh, Wars. Um, okay, well, I really liked Rey. Um, I was sad that they killed Luke Skywalker. I was annoyed that Rose kissed Finn because Finn and Rey are supposed to end up together. <laughs> Although maybe... Kylo Ren will turn from the dark side, and then him and Rey will get together. Or maybe they're brother and sister like Luke and Leia. Unlikely. Um, you don't know. Uh, it's unlikely. We don't know who her parents are. <laughs> um, <laughs> I want to start with just general broad terms. So when you look at the um, characterization of Rey, uh, for instance... Um, what kind of performance do you believe uh, Daisy Ridley gave us? Um, I thought she was spectacular as Rey. Um, there were maybe one or two moments where I felt like she was portraying Rey as not necessarily inept, but naive. And that is shown within the throne room scene with Snoke. I think she is naive. On purpose. Like, I think that's part of her character. Because she has this force inside of her that she said she doesn't know what it is or what to do with it. But it's just always been there, so she doesn't understand it. Okay. Um, I think that was on purpose. Do you think um, there were a lot of connotations within The Force Awakens of Rey being a Mary Sue? Uh, I, I felt this uh, film showed more than anything that she wasn't. Um, she was very... Um, what's the term? I don't want to say inadequate, but she she was more concerned with her past still than leaning forward. It was never about uh, what Luke wanted. It was all about freeing him out of his hermitage. And that was, in my opinion, naive of her. I don't understand. How is it naive to want? Like, that's what ended up happening. She expected to show up and Luke be ready to go. Well, that's because she had always been told that he was the hero. She believed in the legend of Luke Skywalker. Which turned out to be true. To a certain extent. Um, he did show one of the strongest force powers that I've seen in the current canon. Uh, to be able to astral project, essentially astral project his essence. Isn't that what Snoke's been doing with his big head? No, Snoke was using a hologram. It was interesting to see Snoke throw a hux around the bridge, though. Yeah, throw a hologram? How do you do that? Ask Vader. I Vader force choked uh, Admiral... Oh, I can't think of that Admiral in Empire. But without a thought, he took it right through the, the string and... And then Admiral Giet uh, was raised just be... No, that's not right. Admiral Ozzel was the one he choked. Admiral Ozzel, Admiral Ozzel came out of light speed too close to the minefield, blah, 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 blah. But we're not talking about Empire. We're talking about The Last Jedi. Rey is The Last Jedi. Yeah. Rey, and they, they showed that... For a minute, I thought Kylo Ren was going to be The Last Jedi. I thought he was going to be the good guy. Well, talking about Kylo Ren for a moment, 
he he pulled a surprise that I didn't expect. Which was? Uh, kill, cutting Snoke in half. I was thinking about that, actually. And for a minute, I thought he was going to turn to the light and become one of the good guys. However, I think he saw an opportunity to take advantage of Rey and combine forces with her, and he couldn't do that with Snoke alive. I don't think he saw that opportunity until after he killed Snoke. After <laughs> Ray pulled the lightsaber and it flew around and hit her in the back of the head, which was one of those comedic moments in the film I didn't expect, but I enjoyed. Um, and I, I want to say this now, the Porgs are almost non-existent. The what? The Porgs, the little... The little penguin-looking things that Chewbacca's new friends that Chewbacca tried to eat. No, he was flying with them. Okay, the Falcon. Before he was flying the Falcon with the Porgs, and he had that roasted chicken thing on a spit. That wasn't one of that, them. Oh, that was a it porg. Was that not. was a porg without it a was doubt. Not. That was a porg. I'm it sure was not. that was a porg with no, a little bit of time. Like, and they were. Where do you get time on this random planet that they're on? <laughs> It was in the, in the jungle. I'm sure it was in the Falcon store. Oh, Han's you, got a spice rack. Well, sp you don't know what spice is in the Star Wars universe, do you? I don't know what it's that means. It's essentially cocaine. Okay, well, whatever. So <laughs> we're going to move on from that. So that was not one of those things. They were like cute, and Chewbacca was like, Arr, and they were like, oh, I'm so hungry. Please feed me. Feed me my dead cousin is no, essentially what I, that's not I, that what is it how was. I took that's that scene. That's not what that it was. That is definitely how I took that scene. No, that was not. Oh. He was not eating his new friends. <laughs> they weren't friends then. But uh, I, speaking of the porks in that instance, I did like the little caretakers, the little lizard guys. What lizard guys? The ones that got pissed off at Ray when she shot the... They weren't the, lizards. Oh, they were They were lizards? They were not lizards. What would you classify the caretakers then? I don't know. They looked like they had frog faces, but they didn't have long, creepy tails like lizards do. Okay, so can we just compromise and say amphibians? Can we call them Jedi frog people? If you look at some instances, some people have called them Jedi frog people. Um, I think. JFP. Uh, <laughs> anyway, the lightsaber flying around the back end and hitting Ray in the back of the head was one of those moments where where you see Snoke's power and basically trying to humble Ray. And he spent a lot of that time trying to humble He wanted to kill her. Why would he want to mm -hmm. humble her? He was toying with her. He was killing her. He was toying with her. Trying to get he, he. So Kylo Ren was he really wanted Kylo to kill her. Yes, he did. And at that point, he was still conflicted. It was not. It, so the, you're telling me that Snoke was trying to get Kylo the, to pick. The no, the way I read that scene was that uh, Snoke was trying to get. Uh, Kylo to finally commit to the dark side because that's what I just said. He's trying to get Kylo Ren to pick. No, he wasn't trying to get him to pick light or dark. He was trying to get him to commit because the the uh, the argument that they had at the beginning about killing Han Solo was that it drove that wedge into him and he didn't commit to the dark side. So his thought was, you kill. Ray, after getting the location of Skywalker, but what he got wasn't the location of Skywalker. It was that basically Skywalker had agreed to just sit alone and die. And he wanted Ben to kill Ray because they had made that connection that Snoke basically played with both of them. And then when the confliction came from Kylo when he realized that Snoke's been messing with him the whole time, even though Han said that. So he kills Snoke, and then he, after killing Snoke, is when he is truly and utterly lost, so to speak. I don't think that's true. Oh, 100%. Why he, would he be lost? He is not redeemable. 
oh, right. He wasn't lost in that. He wasn't <laughs> sure where he was. <laughs> right. He right. Was no, he was lost, he was lost to, to the, dark, the side. dark side. Okay. That makes sense. I disagree, but that's okay. I think he saw that opportunity prior to killing Snoke. I think he saw that Snoke was toying with him, was manipulating him, and he saw Ray's spunk and um, thought he could turn power because and uh, the limitless power essentially because if she was that powerful being untrained then I think he saw a greater potential in her well I look at the what she could do with the limited training that she had Luke that didn't Luke did not train yeah. her in any kind of force or lightsaber tactic what he more or less trained her in was philosophy that the Jedi of old basically needed to die and that the new era of Jedi, the true era, well, I can't I guess you can't say true era, but the one without that dogmatic narrow view that allowed Palpatine to rise to power, which I loved seeing Luke call him Darth Sidious. Well, that's who he is. Yes, but nobody in the Empire knew that outside of Vader and yeah. probably Tarkin. Wow. Luke knows things. But Talks to Yoda. Dead Yoda. <laughs> I think that Yoda scene was the first time Luke has seen Yoda in a very long time. The way the interaction that they had made me feel that Yoda hadn't been around Luke for a long time. Well, he had cut himself off from the Force. Ray said that. And he agreed. Interesting thought process that only the force ghosts can come to people who are open within the force. Well, I think the force can penetrate through people who don't believe in the force. Like it's like oxygen. I don't but believe in oxygen that still exists. Actually, Luke, your thought to that. Luke was closed off to the force. He was that force project, that force projection. It, this conversation has brought me to look at Jedi a little different. Return of the Jedi. Because Luke's in the Ewok you village. You can't say Jedi now. I know. That, that, yeah, I know. In Return of the Jedi, Luke is, after the defeat of the Emperor, and Luke's in the Ewok village, and the Ewoks are munching on some stormtrooper. And he is looking out, and he sees Vader. He sees, well... Sky, Anakin Skywalker, Obi-Wan, and Yoda. And Leia grabs him after, when he's looking at these Force ghosts and nobody else sees them. So if everyone else is essentially closed off from being able to feel the Force at that point, that makes sense why nobody would be able to uh, see them. It's a very good catch. Very good. Okay. I, did, I didn't see that. Okay. I, I still want to know how Force Ghost Yoda can summon lightning. Well, I just didn't think that was possible. Yoda can do whatever Yoda wants. Dead, alive, <laughs> yeah. whatever. Yoda is the all-powerful. The way he spoke about Rey, Yoda. I wonder if, Rey, if Yoda will appear to Rey. What do you mean? What do you mean? How did he speak? Well, I don't understand. What he made saying. when when Luke was lying there. He, oh my gosh, Posey. He made a comment about Ray being the future of the Jedi and being essentially their own hope, their only hope. And it just makes me wonder if Yoda is going to because his voice is heard within her Force vision and. Uh, the Force Awakens. Okay, we're not giving away the ending. I don't care if this is a spoiler review or not. We're not giving away the ending. So, that said, there has to be some continuity of characters. And we're not going to have Princess Leia anymore, presumably, because she's passed. <laughs> That's true. Um, there was some so reports. So it would make sense that Yoda would, would be there. What was it? There was a couple. There were reports, probably right around the time Carrie Fisher died, which would have been a, actually a year ago now that episode nine was going to be Leia heavy, which I could see that. They, they left that 
that doorway open uh, at the end of eight. But depending on the the rewrites that they have they've said that they're going to do, they could essentially push that story out a little bit farther. And I haven't. Uh, I do not want to see in that opening crawl like episode seven was Luke Skywalker has vanished. The opening crawl of nine saying General Leia is dead. Why? It's just one of she was one of those big main characters from the from the original trilogy and I They killed Han. Why can't they kill on him? screen? There's a difference between dying in on screen than but that's future speculation. There's I can go anyway. And that's not where I want to lead this conversation yet. Um, because right now we're only talking about the Force user's journey. Um, so with that aspect saying, did you notice on Octu? I don't know what that means. Octu is the island planet Luke was on. Okay. The... F- re- refresh my memory. Maybe you remember. What started the fight between Ray and Luke? What fight? Where Ray is swinging a staff at him and Luke pulls a lightning rod out with the force and then he throws it away and she takes Anakin's old lightsaber and goes to swing at him? Uh, She found out that he tried to kill Ben. Ah, the fall of Ben Solo. Okay. Which story? There are a few different versions of that story within this film. Which one do you believe? I think they are both true. However, each from has, a certain point of view, each you <laughs> your reality is what you perceive. Okay, okay, that's I deal with that all of the time. What I say is not what other people hear. So just because Ben experienced it differently than Luke, I think it's both. I think the truth lies somewhere, somewhere in the middle. Somewhere in the middle. So I believe Luke's story, but I also believe Ben's perception of that. You, did you notice during the different retellings of that when Ben tells it, Luke's got this face full of fear and anger and hatred and that he was just going to... I think that's a little bit of him projecting. I think I was. that's where I was going. And then the way Luke looks at the lightsaber lit in his hand, he had fear in what he was going to do, what that fleeting moment, what he was going to do. Well, it just goes to show how powerful the dark side really is. Yes, and how it runs through the Skywalker line. Because that's the only way, in, in Return of the Jedi, it was the only way Luke beat Vader, was tapping into the dark side. Um, and I, I have this feeling that Rey will be tapping into it a little bit more. She... Didn't tap into it as much as I thought she would in this film. Um, but uh, it was very interesting to me to see... You could see how strong Luke was in the Force. Because after Ray knocked him down, he didn't fall with a thud. He floated there for a second and then let himself down. So I thought that was a very subtle way of showing just how powerful Luke is. Even disconnected from the Force. Um, is there anything else about this storyline that you, you'd like to, to bring up before we move on to uh, Leia, po, Leia and Poe and Imerson Holdo? I don't know what that means. The purple-haired lady, okay. Princess Leia and Poe. Who was she? She looked familiar to Lord me. Dern. Oh. Um, the very first Jurassic Park. She was the lady doctor. <gasps> she was the lady doctor in Jurassic Park. Yes, she was. Yes, thank you. I was trying to figure out some purple hair. That threw me off. I was trying to figure out the whole time who that lady was. Yep. Laura Dern. I don't, I don't know. That. <laughs> that's just Jurassic her, Park. that's, yeah, that's just Jurassic her Park real name. That's, yeah. Um, so anything else about the Force users? No. Yeah. Um, there is one thing I want to say. Snoke was extremely powerful. Being able to bridge uh, Luke and uh, not Luke, Kylo and Ray across such a vast distance, multiple times, without knowing where Ray was. And well, you don't have to know where people are. It just happened to the Force to use it. 
No, but the way that they uh, perceived it is that you needed to know where someone was to be able to use the force on them in particular. Well, that's not true. They also thought that they couldn't be tracked through light speed. That was a very interesting uh, subplot that I'd like to get to when we talk about Finn and Rose. Uh, the one thing that I really like, you, you don't see, you only see Snoke use three powers, really. He uses force, force push and pull like with the lightsaber and when he was essentially flinging Ray around the room. He used a stronger version of, uh, I'm not quite sure what it's called, but it was like a force, uh, that force mind penetration that uh, Kylo used in The Force Awakens, but much stronger. As you could tell, she couldn't resist it. But did you notice the one that I enjoyed the most was where he electrocuted <laughs> Kylo Ren? Well, the other Because he pointed at the ground and he just Somebody shot some that lightning. Palpatine. And Who did Palpatine, that Palpatine was the one using the lightning. Well, then how did he know old and wrinkly? Because it reflected off Mace Windu's lightsaber. At least that's the explanation we're given. Okay, okay so let's move on to Leia, uh, Admiral Holdo, and... The Purple Hair Lady. Yes, the Purple Hair Lady. And uh, I'm drawing it, Poe. Um, I didn't think Poe had enough to do. I thought he, like, they're trying to turn him into a leader, which essentially now the resistance is leaderless. Uh, if they don't recast Carrie Fisher's role as Princess Leia. Um, but if this is meant to show him going from a cocky flyboy like Han Solo was to... Uh, leader. He, he almost has that Han Solo arc. Okay, I love you. Don't compare him to Han Solo. Nothing compares to Han Solo. Han Solo is like way up here on a pedestal, and Poe is Poe. Okay, so let's go back to talking about Laura Dern <laughs> and Emerson Holdo. Uh, she was very... Oh, well, her performance was spectacular. I, I enjoyed the way I she... Know. Why? Why didn't you... Because in- she was a terrible leader. If she would have just said, hey, this is our plan, then Paul wouldn't have tried to sabotage everything. True. But I don't think that would have mattered. I think he still would have sent Finn and Rose on their mission. I have a question. Okay. Did she escape? She might be dead. I couldn't figure out the timing of... So she was jumping to light speed to distract them. Oh, um, no. Emerson Holdo is dead, without a doubt. I just asked you. I thought you were talking about Rose. I apologize. We don't know if Rose is dead or not. No, we don't know. Right. Well, right now, I'm pretty sure she's alive, because I don't think... She was alive when they brought her into the base, but that's the last we saw of her. No, she was on the bed, remember? And oh, that's that. right. That's where we saw the books. The, the, she was on the I bed, you're like, right. Oh, she, hey. I felt for the screen time that she had, she... Well, had a strong performance. Um, she, the way I looked at her withholding the information from Ray, from not Ray, from Poe, is because Poe's a hothead. At the very at the beginning of the movie, Poe doesn't know what it means to lead, so he couldn't be trusted with that information. He sacrificed all their bombers when they had very few ships and people. Hmm. I'll tell you what I did like about the purple haired lady. Mm-hmm. Her costume. Really? Yes. They gave her the appearance of a very elongated neck and a very thin, slender, almost inhuman. And her movements were very fluid. I didn't pick up on the fluidity. I did I did pick up on the slenderness. Uh, I I was very pleased with Leia. Um, she wasn't in a lot of the film uh, because of a very early attack on the bridge, which you could go back to Kylo. He was conflicted about killing his mother, but those uh, to other ties that were with him, they didn't care. Took out 
Leia took out uh, Admiral Akbar, which was nice to see him die in a... Is that the fish head guy? Yes, that was a fish head guy. It was nice to see him go out in a battle, but to see Leia floating out in space... She used the Force. I thought she was dead, but I thought, I thought even seeing the marketing, because as soon as I walked into the movie, I for, forgot half the marketing. Okay, what's next? Um, we have one storyline left to talk about. Which is? Rose, Finn, and their trip to Canto Bite. Um, so what did you think of the jail and the, the slicer? What's a slicer? The guy they met in prison. The hacker. He was the master of code breaker. Yes. Guy. Yes. That, He's a that, slicer? That's basically what Star Wars calls hackers, yes. Oh, okay, I didn't know. What's his real name? Do we know what his name the is? The actor or the character? The character. The character, I don't think they say his name, but and I didn't watch the uh, credits, but in the promotional material, they called him DJ. It has really no meaning. No real meaning. Canto Bite, the slicer. I didn't like the the idea of that man having a stutter, that character. Oh having yeah, a stutter. that's what we were talking about. Okay, so okay. That's all right. I it's not that I had a hard time mm -hmm. understanding him or seeing or, or who he was or, or anything like that. I just I felt like it was unnecessary. I feel like it gave him more of a real down to earth. So he's not some smooth talking business dealer, career criminal person, but he kind of is. But it made him seem more like just a dirty bad guy who is just out to manipulate whomever he could manipulate to get ahead. It just kind of made him, it made him, <laughs> I, I suppose you could say, gave him a flaw that. I, I was pleased, like... He needed a flaw, otherwise he's a Mary Sue, right? Oh, I guess we don't know anything about him, but it, but scum and, and that aspect, I, I suppose Done. you're right. Full circle um, right there. But he was, even if the Finn Re Rose DJ storyline wasn't necessarily important to the plot, like the overall plot, because really the overall plot is about... <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Ray and Luke and Snoke and Kylo. It was super important because I thought Ray and Finn were going to run into You're each other. You're still shipping Ray and Finn. I thought, well, they were on the same ship. Were they not? If you tell me they're not, I'm going to be really upset. They were on the same ship at the end. That's where they were fighting. Ray was fighting Kylo Ren and they were Yeah, kinda... but they didn't know they were on the same ship I the know, same but we knew they were on the same ship. Okay. So I thought they were going to like meet up and like save the day. I did wonder instead, how everybody was going to get off the ship. They decided to blow the ship up. I did think it was kind of odd to see Ray disappear off of that with what whatever what do they call it? Leader Snoke's vessel or whatever and then all of a sudden she's on the Millennium Falcon. I'm sorry. But whatever. Logical. Um, she would pick her up. Yes, I got that. But when they were, on, when Ray, not Ray, Rose, Finn, and DJ were on the way to slice into, uh, to disable that hyperdrive deal. The tracking thing. Yep. And, and DJ was going through, basically, he was tr just trying to steal what he could out of the ship. And, it opened mm -hmm. Finn's eyes to the nature of the business of war. Because he, he was going through all those holograms of ships that they sold to the First Order, and then all of a sudden the X-Wing's there, and this guy sold X-Wing to the Resistance, too. So it's showing that, uh, I guess you could say it's topical based on kind of like these days, if you think about it, show, basically selling weapons to both sides of the conflict and, and profiting on the conflict itself. Well, that's just like back in the day when there was a gold rush. What do you mean? But you don't go after the gold. You sell the shovels and the Levi's. Suppose that's fair. Suppose that's fair. Um, 
So I guess within that aspect to to mm-hmm. broaden Finn's character, to move him from just the, the stormtrooper that wanted to run away, gave him something to fight for. And it looked like he was just willing to martyr himself for the cause. Well, I think he was so committed at that point. When he was running that big old hyperdrive drill thing. Yes. What I, I, to me, it just looked like a Star Destroyer engine. Was a mini Death Star. Really? Mini Death Star? Well, they said it had Death Star technology and it would crack Did it? Up, yes. I didn't, I didn't catch that. I didn't catch that he said yes. it had Death Star technology. I don't remember who said that, but yeah. I know Finn uh, was the one who said it cracked the door open like an egg. Yeah, he said it had Death Star technology. Oh, I didn't catch that. Yeah, he did. Mini Death Star. Um,. But it, it, gave, it gave him more of a character push. It gave him a love interest that really wasn't a love interest until she saves his life. And kisses him. Well, to be fair, she thought she was, di- she was she's dying at that point. I half expected him to save her and then them get out of the, the skiffs, those, those sand skimmers, and then attack all those things on, on foot. Yeah, that's... It. Their performances went, and I got, I have to say that Kelly Marie Tran, she's the lady that played Rose, phenomenal job. Uh, when we first meet her, and she's crying over the death of her sister in <laughs> in Poe's bombing kerfuffle, and she's like, "I'm mourning, but I'm still not letting anybody escape. I will tase you." <laughs> and then tases the man that she thinks is a hero and gets that rude awakening with Finn saying, nah, I, I'm out. I'm only here because I, I like Ray." Okay. And I, I just thought she did a very, very good job with her characterization and her she performance. She character. Yep. Yeah, it was a good movie. You should go see it. Again. To essentially sum up, I liked, I thought uh, Mark Hamill's performance as Luke um, was spot on. It, it really made you feel <laughs> for why he was in exile. Okay. I, oh, 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 I, that made, that, I have to, I have to say this. So the end of Force Awakens, it's got that pan and you got Ray handing that lightsaber and then you, you it's not the first scene in The Last Jedi, but you get that, that scene in Jedi, and, or Last Jedi, and Luke is looking at the lightsaber, and he knows it's his first lightsaber. He knows it's his dad's lightsaber, and he's just like, meh. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> I loved it. And then Ray kind of stood there like, hmm, do I go pick up the lightsaber? Do I follow him? Hmm. Yeah. There was... <sighs> There was a lot of stall tactics in this film played for comedy. Like Poe with Hux. Hello, General Hux. Oh, yes, that was very funny. Are you sure that's him? I don't know about that. I'll continue to hold. (laughs) Yes, that was very funny. It was hilarious, but I was just like, this is the same thing he did with Kylo Ren at the beginning of The Force Awakens. You talk first, I talk first, how's this go? That kind of thing. Oh, yeah, he did do that. So they're really putting that into his characterization. And I think from that point of view, Oscar Isaac is really good at that. Um, I also... In, I, we weren't debating that. No, we weren't. There were some but up. I, were I was quiet. talking about the um, performances, and I thought everybody hit. Uh, the only one that... I didn't really, I could have taken it or leave, leave, left it was, I don't, I think they were all really good. Uh, Gwendolyn Christie as Phasma, uh, seeing that, that helmet split and the fear in her eye, that, I think she's dead. Uh, I enjoyed everybody's performance. Uh, I thought it was spot on. It's a movie that is definitely worth seeing. And if you, you, if you've sat through this, you don't care about spoilers, but read my article on my website and let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching.